All right. Hey. Clicking, 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 clicking. Thinking. I'm never sure actually when live starts, so I always want to wait till that little doodad quits and those numbers pop up and you get the little live deal. So anyway, uh, I think we are up and going. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome again to the Daily Link. It's good to see you here on this Monday, continuing to uh, pray for you as the church, pray for our community. Uh, our, our nation, our world is just uh, its going through a lot right now, and it needs the church. And uh, I, I, hope, I hope and pray that, that you are taking yourself before the Lord as well in this process of what does it mean to be the church in the midst of all this? Um, you know, several, several, oh, by the, no, did I already say welcome to the Daily Link? Anyway, if I didn't, welcome to the Daily Link. Um, as you guys are logging on, um, just a little bit of history for, the, for, for us with the Linter Church of God here. Uh, many of you remember, it's actually been, it was one year ago when I uh, kind of got up on a Sunday morning and I had some PowerPoint projections and I, I told you that we are going to be having a discussion about the vision of the future. And uh, I don't think people really realize that we are going to be turning things over on their head as much as we did. Um, but we presented with you a major shift that we wanted to see happen in the life of the church moving forward. And the burden really came out of just the way that we had been going about church is that, you know, we come every week and we worship and we listen and then we grab our stuff and we go to lunch and then we do it all over again. And, and what we really struggle with is that there's, there's a gap of application. There's a, a, a difficulty in actually taking, taking that word and bringing it into our lives and creating change. And it's not because I think you're bad people or I'm a bad person. And it's not because we don't want to change though. Sometimes we don't want to. Okay. We'll give them that. Uh, but there's a lack of knowledge of how to apply it or the, or we don't even just consider long enough or hard enough what it means for this word to get in us, right? Because there's really two objectives here when, you know, one is how does this get in my heart? But the other one is how does it go out through my hands? How does it become a part of the life that I live? And, and really what we discovered when we step back from it is, you know, singing a song for five minutes at the end of service is hardly a response. It's hardly a time for us as a as a church family to decide what this means for us and, and how it applies to our daily life. That we need to process with one another, that we need others to help us listen. The proverb says, as one man sharpens iron, as one man sharpens another, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. That for you, I need your story and you need my story. And we have to learn to come together and learn from each other so that we can learn how to do this thing called the gospel, right? And so out of that, our, our link ministry was born. And I just want to tell you, you know, that wasn't really, that wasn't without risk. I know one of the conversations that we had leading up to it was, you know, and we're not talking about risk in terms of, oh no, people are going to be upset about the schedule change or, you know, things like that. But it was the risk of giving people a place to speak their mind because that is a risk that that's a risky place you know in a normal church setting you come and the pastor has control of the narrative he or she will get up they have the microphone they have the influence and when you release people to go sit at a table and you give them permission to open their mouths you are actually giving them the microphone so to speak they're in a small group in which they can influence and you don't have control over what they say they can say anything so there is there is risk in that but, and it can be a tremendous blessing, but it can also be a tremendous curse, right? Depending on how the conversations go. And we stepped into this, we stepped into these dialogues knowing this, that we as a church had to learn how to have a conversation. We had to learn the art of conversation in the spirit. Uh, you know, one of the realities is that there's not, just divisions in the world that are out there is the same divisions that we are seeing manifest in our society today are also within the walls of the church they're within the walls of your own household sometimes they're even within the within the confines of your marriage that we have a microcosm in here of the macrocosm of the turmoil that is happening in the world and how 
and you know how do we engage in this right how do we how do we teach people how do we learn ourselves how to have a conversation where we can listen where we can share where we can even disagree and here's the thing to not divide but by the time you get to the end of the conversation to choose to love greater rather than less right uh, and so we launched into this experiment as the church asking the question is it possible church is it possible to share our lives to share our experiences to share our perspectives our opinions and still love and be loved and so we began to invite you into having conversations, not about the weather, not about the sports, not about lunch and what you're having for lunch, but about the real deep issues of life, right? About faith, about morality, about your struggles. Um, even at times, politics, if it's, if it's a part of the conversation, it's a part of the conversation, right? To, to go down, you know, issues of justice, issues of racism. Um, some of these things we branched into, some of these things that we haven't got to yet, because obviously there's more weight with different conversations. But can we learn as the people of God to have conversations? And it's, you know, I, I miss it so much. We stand by this vision today. And I, I one of the reasons I can't wait to get back together, and I know it's still going to be time because of everything, that, because of the COVID stuff, I miss it so badly because because we need conversations right now. We, we need, we as the church, we need to learn how to come together in love and unity. That place in which all sides can speak, that place in which we can be heard rather than attacked, where we can speak and not yell, and where we can, our main objective going in is to understand rather than to prevail. Uh, you know, we've gone so long in our society right now without actually having real productive conversations. There's been a lot of talking, but there hasn't been a lot of real conversations. And now we're seeing that we're moving to yelling. And, and it's not one side that's yelling, guys. It's not. It's every side that's yelling, right? And, and in the midst of this yelling, I got to tell you, I feel like, I feel like people have lost their minds. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I'm looking, I'm like, you, you've got to be kidding me right now. This, this is where we're at. And, and yet, you know, people are, are so convinced. They're so angry. They're so hurt. They've talked so much without being able to have a conversation back and guilty on all sides, right? But we've talked so much without conversation that we have we have literally lost our we've lost our minds and our bearings and we've surrendered ourselves uh, to to emotionalism to the, to the fullness of the flesh is really what we're seeing is we're seeing the fullness of the flesh come out and you know what does it mean for us to have uh, to have a conversation again and you know one of the things that I want us to remember is that you know Jesus commissioned the disciples to he commissioned the disciples to be witnesses and a witness is someone that speaks you know the the weapon that the lord has given the church is the weapon of our of our voice and the weapon of our of our ears and our our testimony and i think it's it's so important for us to remember as the church that we're called to proclaim the good news we're not claimed to enforce it and in order to proclaim that good news right because because Christ's objective is to win people to Christ, not to defeat them with Christ, right? To win people to the truth, not defeat them with the truth. And yes, yes, Christ was, because of that, you know, Christ was a dividing line. And there were places in which, you know, people were, people were cast out and people were, were pushed aside because of the things that they brought to it. But, but Christ used conversation. He spent three years with men with these 12 men trying to get them to understand the heart of what he was about. And so the big question that I, that I have, and I know one of the big questions you have is Brian, in the midst of this polarization, in the midst of all the different injustices, and, and I think everybody looks at it and they see several different things that are unjust right now. Okay. In the midst of it all, uh, what, what is my place? What, what do I do? How can I, as, as a, a believer in Jesus Christ, be a part of this solution. And, and my, 
by admonition to you. And what I want to talk with you this week about is learn how to have a real conversation, that we can learn how to be people of grace, that we must learn not to be talkers, not to be yellers, but to be conversationalists and to, to be peacemakers in the world. You know, um, to commit ourselves to having hard conversations that not only require work for other people, but they require work in us. You know, we as the uh, we as the church. That's crazy. I oh, there it is. I was going to say I missed a total total section of my my notes there. Um, but in a in a time in which the left is so divided from the right, and and, and races are so divided, and you know it breaks the heart of God, in which different different people, depending on, you know, whether it be the scholar, color of their skin or their political affiliation, all kinds of different things. are There's just injustice everywhere. There's inequity. I, and, and I don't know all the solution to it. It's so complex, but I want to be a part of the solution, right? Jesus, when he began his ministry, Luke chapter 4, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Again, to proclaim to the gospel to the poor to what to not to defeat not to defeat but to win the poor to Christ to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to proclaim the release to the captives recovery of sight to the blind to free those who are oppressed and to proclaim the favorable year of the lord i want to be a part of that mission um, what does that look like for me in a very practical sense Right? How do I be a part of the healing? What can the church do to shine a light? Um, and you say, well, Brian, I'm not a public figure. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a Facebook activist. What can I do? I'm a normal, everyday human being going about my life. Like I'm a First Timothy 2 kind of person who says we're supposed to pray for all people. Right? It says for kings who are in all in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And he goes on to say this is a good thing. Right? I just want to live this quiet life in godliness and dignity. And there is, there is merit in that. And there's also times of upheaval, upheaval when the church takes a place. But what does it mean for me to take a place, right? I'm, I'm just a private. I'm not a, I'm not a lieutenant. I'm not a, I'm not a chief or a commander. What does that mean for me personally? And I really believe one of the greatest places that the church can be a shining light in the midst of this really has to do with your day-to-day -day affairs your daily acting out in the relationships that you have in your homes, in the marketplace, even with, with, with people in the church to be willing to engage in hard conversations that challenge us and to learn and to do work on ourselves that we can go into those conversations trying to understand rather than trying to win. What if in a world that is so divisive and where everybody's yelling, the exact same things that the world is yelling about and the world is in conflict over, those same things are happening in the church in a place of peace and in a place of love in a place of unity and in a place of growth. How much greater of a witness can we give as the church if we learn how to have real conversation? John 13, 34 through 35, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you would also love one another. And it is by this love that all men will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. It starts in the household of God. And if you recognize this chapter, John 13, right before this, Jesus had washed the disciples' feet. He had washed the feet of Judas. He had washed the feet of who, who would betray him. He washed the feet of Peter, who would deny him. And he says, I have given you an example. I want you to go and do likewise. And, and I'm one of the things, so I, I'm giving you kind of an introduction this week um, as to where we're going and what I want to unpack. And I want to be, I want to be very, very practical for you this week because I, because really what's happening in our world requires all of us, but it requires all of us not demanding something of somebody else, but willing willing to do work on ourselves and it begins with begins with our ability to come together as a church as iron sharpens iron so does one man sharpen another and to be to be willing 
right? To be ready, to be active, to say, I am going to learn how to have a conversation that's, that's, going, that's going to shape me and going to shape others and bring unity back to this world. And it's going to start in the church. And Jesus washes his disciples' feet, knowing their failures, knowing that they have so much to learn. <laughs> and, and that is our, our role with, with one another, is to learn to have grace in the midst of this season, to open our ears, to open our hearts, and when we open our mouths, to be able to have that same grace, the same ears, the same hearts on both sides of that conversation, to invite the Lord in the midst of that, uh, and to rally around the love that Christ has shown for us in the washing of his disciples' feet. And so um, this, is, this is just an introduction, um, but I want to challenge you this week. I want to challenge you this week, and, and we're going to be having conversations as, as the church moving forward. To do, the, to do just that, to say, I am learning. I am learning to be a part of a conversation. Not a part of a battle, although there's battle involved in it. Okay, don't, don't over over uh, analyze my words here. But I'm learning to be a part of the conversation. I'm learning to be sharpened so that I can sharpen others. So let's, let's pray together. Uh, Lord Jesus, um, we have so much growth to do, not just as a world, not just as a nation, not just in our political bodies, um, Lord, not not just in uh, just in the areas that are at the forefront of our knowledge right now, though though they are. Lord, we need to learn how to be the church in this environment right now, and I feel that many of us we feel totally under equipped. And we don't know what it means for us as individuals to step into the game and to be a part of the solution to bringing Christ's love back into a world that has completely rejected his love. Father, we pray now specifically for those that Jesus came to release, Lord, for the, for the poor, for the blind, for the oppressed, for the prisoners. That, Lord Jesus, in, in whatever way they have been harmed, whether it be by a person or by an institution or by a, a tradition that has carried on. Father, we, we ask that we as the church would be able to be a part of their healing and be a part of moving forward together as a nation um, and as a people and as a church in unity and in love. So I ask, Lord Jesus, that right now as we begin this, this conversation, even as the church, a conversation about conversation, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that you would give us repentant hearts, Lord, that, that repentance, as we talked about, would be good news so that we can align ourselves with the will that you have for us, Lord, with one another and in our community and in the things that our community and our nation are facing today. We want to be instruments of your peace and in your love. And so we, we lift all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we'll continue the conversation tomorrow. Love you. Take care.